Hey guys, Jess here. Um, it's winter time, so that's soup time for me, and I wanted to make you uh, my lentil soup. It's been a big hit, so I thought you might like the recipe. Um, here are the main ingredients and things that we need. Obviously lentils. Um, it's a full pound of lentils. I like the orange ones, but this is a blend. I think they call it the harvest blend, so it's got some yellow, some traditional lentils in it. Um, dried lentils, put them in a sieve, just kind of run your hands through them, check and see if there are any sticks or pieces, things that are not lentils. Um, and then you run them under some water, rinse them out, and then they just go into the soup. I'll show you that later. Um, other main ingredients, one can, 28 ounces of diced tomatoes with the juices. Everything's already prepped for you. Uh, basic ingredients include also celery and carrots. I'm using two carrots, about medium size, and three sticks of celery. Stalks of celery, I guess. Uh, some garlic. I use about four to five cloves. One whole yellow onion. Honestly, you can use any kind of onion you like. Two quarts of vegetable broth. You could sub out um, chicken broth if you have that. Um, if you're going full vegetarian, obviously go vegetable broth or some like homemade stock if you have it. Um, in terms of the seasoning, salt and pepper, and then some ground cumin and some ground coriander. Um, so that's kind of it in terms of all the ingredients that go into it. Kind of straightforward, pretty simple. Um, in terms of equipment, um, if you have an immersion blender, this is awesome. If you don't, you can use a traditional blender um, or no blender. It's really up to you. Um, it's really more about the texture in terms of how you like your lentils. I like them a little bit pureed. So, yeah, that's the way I go for it. Um, so let me do a little bit of veggie prep for you now. So in terms of the veggies, we can keep them somewhat coarse because we're going to put these through the blender or, or kind of break them down a bit. So honestly, it's not too much prep work in terms of what we have to do to them or with them. Um, I like that about this. What I also like about this soup is that it's something I think that can really be done on a weeknight, though if you just tend to take longer with certain things or you like to take a little bit more time with your soup, then maybe this would be a, a weekend kind of deal for you. Um, but it takes total, you know, with the prep work and then the cooking time, about an hour. I'm okay with that on a weeknight. Some people are not. Um, that's about my limit. Anything over an hour, I don't want to do that on a weeknight which is kind of understandable, I think, especially if you're working during the day. Um, so I just kind of chop the onion up into fairly substantial pieces. Again, since I'm going to blend this up anyway, I don't really care if it's too small or too fine. If you like your veggies kind of small and you know you're not going to use the blender, then maybe go a little bit smaller on your dices. That's really up to you. Other things I really like about this soup is that it freezes really well, so this is definitely a go-to in my freezer. Um, traveling across the country a couple times a year to see family, coming back on a late flight, getting into the apartment kind of late. It's nice to just pull that soup out, heat it up real quick, have a nice little homemade meal without having to do any work really. Um, that's a nice thing. Uh, certainly appreciate that for sure. Um, so yeah, so things I really like about it um, also is that it travels pretty well too. So this is something that's great to take for lunch. Super hearty and delicious, which is really nice. Alright, so that's the celery. Carrot, I kind of just break it down a little bit more. Again, pretty simple. Again, kind of full-size pieces and then the garlic I do just kind of a rough dice on it again since it's gonna go into the pot and get broken down anyway um, it's no big deal if it's kind of big so let me finish up the veggie prep and then I'll get things cooking on the stove see you in a minute so guys we have all the veggies prepped now we are ready to start cooking I've preheated my uh, nice stock pot here uh, probably my favorite cast iron pot uh, gift from my aunt love it well seasoned now well loved for sure um, got all the onions celery carrots garlic um, we're just going to put a little bit of olive oil at the bottom of the pot kind of spread it around this is probably about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil 
I use extra virgin olive oil. Uh, you can use probably canola oil, anything that doesn't have too much of a flavor. Um, I always like to put the onions in first, kind of let them kind of sizzle a little bit. Basically the foundation of the soup is what we call a mirepoix. It's onions, celery, and carrots. I think of them like the holy trinity of soup bases. So a lot of my soups tend to start with those three ingredients. Um, garlic is another general addition to most of my food just because I really like it a lot. I also find chopping garlic is kind of a therapeutic experience. So, hey, long day at work, take it out on the cutting board and then get a nice meal out of it. So I'm gonna break the onions up with um, my spoon here a little bit. I like to cook down the veggies for a couple of minutes until they get kind of softened. I want the flavors to really come out in them. At this point I like to season the vegetables a little bit too. Helps break down the onion a little bit as well. So I'll put some salt, a little bit of pepper. I like pepper in this soup especially because I think it's one of the more powerful flavors, I guess, of the soup. Coriander has a kind of mild flavor to me. Cumin be kind of strong, but I tend to use just a little bit of cumin because it's um, a little overpowering for me. And this is where the kitchen kind of starts smelling pretty good because the onions are, are starting to cook a little bit. Once I see that they're starting to kind of soften and become a little translucent, then I add the garlic to it at this point. I don't like to add the garlic right away because I don't want it to burn, but I do want the flavors to really come together, so this is a good point to add that in. I always use the onions as an indicator for how are the vegetables coming along because you see them really change their color. Your texture starts to change too. You bring it in and see if that can help you out a little bit. And those flavors really just start to come together. In terms of soups, this is one of my favorites, especially for the winter time. Um, how do I eat it? Well, just as is. I mean, you could add things to it, like maybe a dollop of sour cream or maybe even a little bit of like grated Parmesan if you like that. I tend to like to go kind of basic with this one. Um, serving it with something, I tend to like it just on its own, but uh, tonight, for example, I have uh, some fresh bread. I got some cheese from my local store, which I'm kind of excited to try, it's a, a local cheddar. Um, and I have a homemade cranberry chutney that I made up the other day. So I'm just having like a little kind of side dish. Oh, and a couple pieces of prosciutto because who doesn't like a little bit of prosciutto? So at this point now I'll get the tomatoes ready, which is really simple. You could use fresh tomatoes, sure. You could prep those as well, but I have no problem using canned tomatoes to get me started, especially on a weeknight meal. Since the veggies have really come together at this point and the onions have really softened up nicely, this is the point where I like to add basically everything else to the pot. It's pretty simple from here, which is the nice thing. It cooks for about 40 minutes total, so there's a little bit of wait time on that. Um, I come in about every 10 minutes or so, maybe 15, and just give it a stir see how things are coming along, taste it to see if I need to add anything for seasonings. And at this point I'll add the broth. This is my way of rinsing the can out and getting all those extra good tomato bits from it.
and again, like I said, you can substitute chicken broth here, I think, pretty nicely. Um, I've done that before when I've just had chicken broth in the apartment. But I tend to go vegetarian on this, so I tend to stick with the vegetable broth. I always like to check the broths, too, see what ingredients go into them. Some broths, they add a lot of extra seasonings. This one's a, a pretty basic one. They have some rosemary and bay leaf in it, but I don't think they interfere too much with the flavors of the soup. And here are those lentils. I've rinsed them in just tap water. I picked through them first. There was nothing in this particular batch, but you never know. Sometimes you come across a stick or stem of some kind. All right. And the last thing I do now is I keep the heat up on high. I'm going to add at this point now, I'm going to add the seasonings to it. So if you remember, the basic seasonings are ground coriander. I use a good palmful. That's probably close to almost two tablespoons, perhaps. I really like the flavor of coriander. It's super bright and refreshing. And then I use just a little bit of cumin. This is probably like a quarter of a teaspoon, maybe, if that. Again, just a little bit. It has a very earthy flavor, which I think is nice with the lentils, but I don't like to overpower it too much. And it just isn't a, a flavor I like adore. I think it can kind of take over the soup too much. And then at this point, I'll add a nice dose of black pepper. I like the kind of peppery bite to this soup that it, that it ends up getting. All right, so at this point now, basically everybody's in for the party. Super fun. They're just going to take a nice little bath together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up to a boil. I put the lid on it. I bring it up to a boil. Once it reaches the boil, then I come back and I turn it down so it can simmer. Um, and it cooks at the simmer for about 35 to 40 minutes. Again, you check in on it every now and again, check the flavors, check to see how the veggies are doing, your lentils are doing. And uh, in the end, then we can uh, use our immersion blender or we can use a blender and, and puree it down. Um, we'll get to that point in just a little bit. All right, see you soon. All right, guys, soup has come up to a boil. So at this point now, I give it a nice big stir and turn down the heat nice and low. Bring it down just so it'll simmer. Oh, it's already smelling really good. You can smell the coriander in there. Smell those onions and that garlic. So now at this point, the heat's nice and low. Put the lid back on. And I'm going to just let it simmer for, again, about 35, 40 minutes total. I'll check on it in about 10 minutes. I give it another stir because the lentils kind of sit at the bottom right now. Um, and I'll just keep mixing it up. Ultimately, once I, I feel like the lentils are nice and tender, the veggies are nice and tender, it's really ready to go. And at that point, then we'll blend it up. So see you in a little bit of time and we'll have some soup. Okay. Hey guys, so our soup is pretty much ready. I checked on it a couple of times to check for flavor, um, check for texture. But honestly, I think it's ready to go at this point. So feeling pretty good about things. Um, at this point, what we have is a nice texture going on to it. You honestly could eat the soup just like this. Um, it's got the big chunky vegetables in it, the full size lentils, and that's totally up to you. I prefer to have mine pureed, but that's just the texture preference that I have. Um, and I have an immersion blender and it's super fun to use, so why not? Um, so I'm going to use the immersion blender for this. If you decide to use a tabletop blender, um, just be really careful. So I turned the heat off on the stove. Um, and even with this, I want to be careful because splattering of hot soup is not fun. It's delicious, but not fun. So um, again, this is pretty easy to use. And if you don't have one of these and you're thinking about investing in one, um, then give it a, give it a whirl. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, you're welcome. I could stop it here at this point and it's kind of like a halfway mix so I still have some chunks of vegetable I have some full-size lentils going but I'm gonna keep going because why not <laughs> Alright, 
simple as that. This is also a really nice um, investment if you tend to make a lot of soups. Um, you tend to like things like butternut squash soup. You um, can use it for that. Um, you can use it even just for making like homemade applesauce. So it's a it's a nice investment if you if you want to make it. Um, not overly expensive. And again, using the tabletop blender takes just a little bit of extra time and a little bit of care um, with that. In terms of serving, I'm just going to have it plain tonight. Um, I have a little snack I had before this, so I feel pretty satisfied. You can top this with some sour cream, some Parmesan cheese if you like. My go-to is definitely a slice of uh, French bread or Italian bread, maybe with a little bit of butter or olive oil on it. And otherwise, it is ready to go. And again, this is going to be great tonight for dinner, tomorrow for dinner, in your freezer, for lunch, whatever you decide to have. It was my little timer to check on my soup, but it was ready to go. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different ways to, to go about doing this. You could change the seasonings if you wanted to as well. So um, give it a whirl. Let me know what you think and uh, hopefully enjoy it. Again, weeknight meal, weekend meal, um, something to enjoy. All right, take care, guys.